Hey folks, long time no see. Uh, finally get back in the hobby a little bit. I'm gonna be trying to build a little De Havilland Comet using these electronics. This is from the, uh, I don't remember what plane. I'll put a picture of what it was though. But uh, four by 12 millimeter motors, simple 2.4 gigahertz receiver. It's a really, really cheap way to get into the hobby. Um, these are the plans that I printed out. It was just a simple three view I found on uh, Google image search. I'm gonna make it out of this block of balsa, which is a little too short, but it should be good enough. But basically gonna transfer this and this onto here, cut that out to shape, and that'll be my fuselage. And then, yeah, same with the pods. And then the wings and stabilizers are just gonna be some, I don't know, 164th inch balsa probably. But uh, yeah, let's trace and cut. All right, so I got these split in half. They should work just fine. And then a little bit of glue around the perimeter. That was a little bit too much glue. I have to break these apart at some point and you don't want them really, really glued together because it just makes it harder. That'll work. Now I'll trim that. So basically what happens here is trim the outline and then trim this outline and then some sanding and then you get the fuselage and then once that's all done and sanded you split this apart and then you carve out the inside and then you have an empty hollow uh, cavity for the fuselage to put the electronics in. All right, so I got it fairly roughed in. Um, I was gonna start sanding, but realized I don't wanna cover this entire room in sawdust, so I'm gonna actually sand it outside. Got a little crazy on the edge there, but that shouldn't matter too much. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go and sand up to the line. And then uh, once that's sanded, retrace the uh, this perspective of the fuselage. And then you trim that and sand more and here we go. All right, so got that roughed in well enough. Uh, so yeah, I've traced this guy back on here.
All right, well, close enough. I'll go sand this and then uh, we'll split this thing back in half. I think I'll have to think about what my next step is. But yeah, sanding. All right, well, got the sides profiled in. Uh, the next step is to radius everything so it's round. All right, now I will go sand uh, the roundness into the fuselage. Um, I mean, technically I could use, like this would be a former, this is kind of what the shape would be like, but it doesn't really matter. Close counts, horseshoes, hand grenades, and micro RC planes. All right, that should do. Um, I could probably get a little more accurate if I wanted to, but uh, like I said, at this size, it doesn't really matter. Normally at this point, before I'd break it open or split it in half, I'd give it a coat of paint because that kind of helps seals the pores and kind of makes a film on the outside that uh, keeps it a little bit stronger so that when you split it a half, split it in half and then start carving out the inside to make the hollow, um, it's got a little more rigidity. But I want to try coloring this in a different way this time, so I'm not going to have that option. Actually, I have to sand the lines off before I do that. Um, but yeah, so when I carve out the inside, I'll just have to be a little bit more careful. But hopefully, I didn't put too much glue in, although I think I did. And uh, so for hollowing this all out, I usually just take an X-Acto, make a bunch of lines, and then chip it all out. Um, you can use a Dremel, though. Um, it's probably a little quicker, and it looks nicer. It gives it a, finer, a nicer inside finish, but um, I don't think I have a socket or an outlet outside. I really don't want to run that thing in here, blasting sawdust everywhere. So when these two are hollowed out, I'll leave just a tiny edge along the whole perimeter so they actually have something to glue back together to. Just make a simple outline for that. I'm gonna sand these lines out before I start cutting into that because you can go pretty thin, because all you need is just a really thin wall. Um, the overall shape will give it enough you know, strength for something this size. I really butchered that part up. Uh, and especially if you do put paint on the outside, you can basically chip away the wood until it's almost just a layer of paint, but it's a little too weak and flexible at that point. But. Of course, you do have to be careful so you don't go too far and poke straight through, but it's one of those things you just work up towards as opposed to trying to do it all in one shot. Right, well, that's a start. You just do that a couple times and you can just hold it up to some light and see how much is shining through on the other side. I still can't see basically any light coming through. So still a little ways to go, but that's basically the process. It is tedious and uh, vaguely mind numbing, but you get a little more control than I imagine you would with a, using a Dremel because this this balsa, balsa in particular is really soft. It'd be really easy to go a little overboard with a power tool. Anyway, 
you get the idea. I'm gonna stop filming because this is pretty boring and uh, come back when I've got this all hollowed out to the level that I needed at. All right, well, that's about as, I could go a little bit further, but um, let me show you see the light here. So a little thin in one spot. I'll leave a little bit left just so I don't accidentally go through. Better safe than sorry. It's pretty hard to put the wood back where it was rather than taking it out. Let's see what the weight comparison is. This one clearly not carved out yet. Point six nine, nice. Three six. So good chunk of savings. Um, yeah, time to do this one. All right, that was fun. Let's see. Point six nine. Very nice. Could go a little further with the, uh, hogging out but yeah good enough I was shooting for like one gram all up weight for the fuselage and wing but I don't know if I'm gonna hit that or not I've only got I think it's like six and a half inches of wing area so it's probably gonna be a little speedy although these electronics 2.86, I think this runs on a 50 milliamp battery. That's another gram or two. So yeah, I should be pretty close to the one gram per one square inch that I usually shoot for. Probably a little higher, but that should be fine. Uh, one mistake I made was um, I need to cut the wing slot because this actually fits inside the wing just a little bit and I should have done it when everything was still square because it's just a lot easier to do it when it's square and not nice and rounded. Uh, same with the uh, elevator, but that should be fine. Oh, and I forgot to sand that out. That's good. And that. The material that I want to use to um, color this with is this stuff right here, uh, alcohol ink. It's a pigment in, a, in an alcohol uh, solution. The alcohol evaporates and the pigment stays where it is. And it should be much lighter than spray paint because spray paint is actually pretty heavy for what it is. Um, and unfortunately, it's very transparent. So any outside blemishes or lines are gonna show up really, really well, usually. When I make one like this, you know, I'll add just a little bit of um, really lightweight spackle filler and sand everything down and then give it a coat of paint and it hides all the mistakes really well. I'm probably not going to be able to get away with it on this one. But uh, the next step is to cut the slots for the wing and for the stabilizer. Uh, I wanted to put a glass or a plastic canopy on like the actual plane has but I used to have a vacuum former but that was when I was in Texas and I'm pretty sure I got rid of it because I already had too much stuff to haul back up here but all right mark where the wings are gonna mount to the fuselage I guess if I use a thicker piece of wood for the wing, I can just notch that chunk out, glue the wing in, and then sand the wing to match the fuselage profile. It'll probably be a lot easier than trying to finagle some little slit in there. This is 132nd. Unfortunately, it's about as 
unstraight as a piece of wood can get. It's got more waves than an ocean. Fortunately, the wing is fairly short, so even a bit of a bow one way or the other shouldn't be too bad. I think that'll work. Not the prettiest thing in the world, but that'll let the, ling, uh, the wing sit flush as opposed to it just being slapped onto the bottom of the fuselage. And it looks pretty level on both sides. Uh, the other one I'll have to do, I'll have to make the stabilizer and cut the slot for that to fit in the back. Now, technically this is perfectly level, so I'm going to add a few degrees of down uh, on the elevator, and that'll help it give it some, and then the motors will be pointed a little bit of down thrust, and that'll give it a little bit of lift, as opposed to everything being at set at zero degrees incidents. And I'm going to try to use the uh, three view as a bit of a template, because it'll just make life a little easier. That should be just about perfect. I'm going to do these exactly like I did the fuselage. Cut this out, split it in half, or split it in half, and then cut it to shape. Then hollow them out. And then I can fit these little 4 millimeter motors in them.
All right, well, there's the uh, pods done. All right, well, I got the pods all hollowed out, uh, but I've made a couple mistakes. One, kind of went a little crazy when I was hogging them out. I split it there and cut a little too far there. Um, I also, this slot should be much higher up. The, the pod should almost be sitting flush with the top of the wing, and I cut it so it's they're sitting quite below flush. Uh, shouldn't really matter though, I guess. The other thing is that I neglected to take into the fact that there's going to be dihedral in the wing, which I did not put this slot on the pods at an angle. So the pods are going to be sitting kind of like this as opposed to straight up and down, but yeah, you won't notice it when it's in the air. And uh, I tried using that alcohol ink and it's a little darker than I wanted. And it also has the problem where if you apply some and then apply some more, it will double up the color, so it's really hard to get a consistent coverage. I don't know if you can see the changes there, but lighter and darker and lighter and darker. So uh, to avoid, I guess, having to make all new pods to fix the, fix the mistakes I made, I'm just going to use this stuff right here, uh, lightweight spackle. And that'll correct all the little blemishes that I made. It also helps seal up the crack when I glue everything together. Because even with spray paint, you'd probably still be able to see that. But that spike will fills it up pretty good. Uh, but I think for now, I'm going to mount the motors into the pods. And then glue the pods together. And then... I guess mount the electronics. And I should be able to start gluing everything together. Oh, I should probably make my rudder. Um, I do still have to figure out how I'm going to do a access hatch for the battery. I want the battery to be up front for center of gravity.
All right, well, uh, the build is pretty much done. Uh, I still have to do the lightweight spackle and sand that all down and then give it some paint, but uh, the actual construction part is done. Um, I went outside with it and gave it a few test throws, and as it sits right now, the center of gravity is just about perfect, uh, which may actually be a bit of a problem because the battery is going to be sitting somewhere around here, which may make it a bit nose-heavy but that might be okay because I neglected to put any down thrust in the motors. Yeah, so it under power, it may wanna pull up a little more than I would normally want it to, so having a little bit of forward CG may not be a bad thing. Um, but I think that's about it. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this lightweight spackle on it, sand it all down, give it a few coats of paint, and then uh, cut a hatch for the battery. I usually do it on the side But doing it on the bottom would definitely make it look a little better Although I think all the wires would be in the way if I try to go through the bottom there Otherwise, I'll just cut a little hatch right here on the side slip the battery in But yeah, looks like a plane it mostly looks like a de Havilland Comet so it works for me. All right, let's finish this thing. All right, well, got the paint and some lines on and some not so good looking accents. It's funny, now that I have the paint on, it looks less and less like an actual uh, de Havilland Comet. Um, canopy is definitely not right. Where the wing mounts to the body is not quite right. These pods are not quite right, but eh, close enough, I guess. Uh, I wish I had weighed it before I put the paint on because after I spray painted it and I picked it up it's like I could actually feel the extra weight from it but let's see where she's at four point seven eight that's with a fifty milliamp battery So 7.37, that's not bad. I think I have about six inches of, squ uh, six square inches of wing area. So it might be a little speedy, but that'll be fine. Uh, next step, I guess, is to cut the slot or the hatch for the battery. And I kind of want it sitting right here. And the receiver ends right about here, so that should be just about enough room for it to sit right on the center and right on top of the center of gravity, because where the center of gravity is is actually about where I want it. I gave it a few test um, test throws out in some long grass and it seems to glide just fine where the center of gravity is right now, so if I can get the battery right on top, that should be just about perfect. Oh, oh my 
goodness, Bobby, honey, are you okay? <laughs> Has Ladybird been in the house? Hi. No. Well, that was exciting. I don't exactly know what happened, but these two power wires going to the receiver definitely shorted out. Which I don't understand because before I put everything together, I tested, powered everything up and tested to make sure I had the right motor going on the right side. And everything worked just fine. Uh, and of course, I had the brilliant idea of gluing the receiver to the side of the fuselages as opposed to just putting a piece of double-sided tape on there. And of course, I already glued this hatch back up. So getting that out of there might be a challenge. This is where bigger planes really come into their own because it'd be a lot easier to get that out of there if this was a big plane. Um, I should be able to pull it out of that hole though. And if not, I can, I guess, try to split it down the top and spread it open. I guess on the uh, plus side, both the power wires and the battery wires are kind of long. I wanted to short them, shorten them up, but I was just going to go with it, but I guess now I'll do it. The battery did get a little toasty, but it didn't puff up or anything. Hopefully, the receiver didn't get damaged, because, uh, well, yeah, that would suck. But I guess now I'll try to get the receiver out of there. All right, got the new wires soldered on. I was able to pop the receiver out relatively easily. Now the important moment, see if this thing actually still works. Okay, that's a good sign. Oh, thank God. Okay, now try to shoehorn this thing back in there without uh, hopefully breaking any other wires. Alright, well, I managed to shoehorn everything back in there. Uh, seems to be working properly. Um, I was going to use the switch to be able to just turn everything on and off and put the uh, hatch on. Uh, where'd the hatch go? Oh. <coughs> um, but I guess I'll, uh, I'll just unplug it and plug it when I'm done using it, but uh, I'm going to throw this battery back on the charger, make sure that it's uh, still somewhat charged or get it up to fully charged again, and then, boy, I really wish I could use that switch, but I would have to glue the transmitter down again, or the receiver down again, and I'd rather not push my luck. Well, I'll just have to do it the hard way. All right, well, uh, once that's done, it looks like it might almost be nice enough to go try test flying this thing, so uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, well, the center of gravity is a little forward. It's working.
Yeah, I've actually got the hang of it. At least getting into a turn without it just wanting to dive and stay in a turn. I wonder how much that gyro is affecting things. I wish it didn't have one, but. We have to go full throttle when you go into a turn. Oh, wow, pretty good stall characteristics for something so small and unruly. Oops. All right, that's all.